The new 5th district, as it's drawn, has a distinctly uh, rural-urban split. How would you work in Congress to serve both of those constituencies that are so different? Well, while I have experience in urban areas, I live in rural central Oregon. And I love that about our district. It's a combination of what's called red, blue, and purple areas. That's who we are as Oregonians, and I think ultimately as Americans. And so I have a strong track record of working across the divide, talking about ideas and issues and not buzzwords. And that's how we focus on the solutions we need to work on to get things done. You know, I've said, and I'm proud to be endorsed and nominated not just by the Democratic Party, but also by the Working Families Party and the Independent Party of Oregon as well. And I've always said, regardless of party affiliation, we all want to be able to put a roof over our head, food on our table. We want opportunities for our kids. We want health care for our families and they're sick. We want safe communities. We don't want our homes to burn down. And we don't want our family farms going under. And that's the job. And that's, uh, I've got experience in all those different areas and really excited about this opportunity to serve Oregonians in Congress. Do, uh, do you believe that the House of Representatives should formally investigate allegations of voting irregularities or fraud from the uh, 2020 elections? Why or why not? Well, voting is actually a state-level issue, and I think ultimately we need to be uh, ensuring confidence in our elections, and we need to do that by having good systems in place. Here in Oregon, our vote-by-mail system is second to none. We have led the way nationally, and so making sure that voters have an opportunity to vote, making sure that ballots are easily accessible, I think voting rights is a critical part of protecting our democracy. And so making sure we uh, have those systems in place, have those protections in place, and going forward that, that all Oregonians and all Americans have the right, who are eligible to vote, have the right and access to vote. And then making sure we have secure systems in place to protect our, our election and, and also protect those counting the ballot and make sure they're not being attacked. So we've had investigations of the 2020 elections already. There's been uh, virtually no I examples or uh, findings of irregularities. And so we can feel really confident on those elections and then also who won. I'm actually uh, running against someone who has denied the uh, results of the 2020 election, which is really frightening because spreading fear about our democracy and undermining our democracy and, and as my opponent has done, uh, celebrating and, and, and supporting the January 6th insurrection is very dangerous. I began my public service career over in Bosnia and Kosovo managing the reconstruction schools and hospitals. I've seen what happens when countries fall apart. We cannot let that happen here. So should we take that as a no, the House of Representatives should not formally investigate further into the 2020 election? Thank you for following up. I think with, with regard to the 2020 election itself, we can be secure, we can be confident in the results and we need to not go back and do that, do have an investigation of the results of the election because I think the investigations have happened and they've proven that the uh, elections were secure and confident. So in short, no, because that work has already been done. The, uh, what do you think should be done at the congressional level to address the many issues of homelessness uh, and address the needs of the people who are living in our streets, in our city parks, in our national forests? This is a huge issue across Oregon in urban and rural areas. So there are short-term solutions and long-term solutions. The short-term needs to be getting people off the streets, getting them into emergency shelters, and providing those wraparound services. So uh, mental health support, addiction services, and providing that, those types of supports, frankly, to our public safety officers, like the CAHOOTS program in Eugene and other programs that are there to help us address people who are living on the streets. In the long term, we need to increase the availability of affordable housing. I'm actually right now working on a, an affordable home ownership pilot project here in Oregon that will set a model for enabling people to get into housing, uh, low cost housing. What's really frightening of the dynamic that's happening uh, nationally right now is we have mega corporations who are buying up housing stock and then forcing people into only rental options and then cranking up the cost of housing. Housing affordability is a huge issue. There are short and long-term solutions that I'm working on now and would love to implement in Congress. Um, does Congress need to work on stricter gun control legislation at the federal level? So I don't, I don't believe in gun control. I believe in gun safety. And what we can do, and we saw that with the recent shooting here in, in Bend, here in Central Oregon, it raised the stakes about the need for greater uh, gun safety. So this is not a, a discussion between 
people having guns or not having guns. This is a conversation between responsible gun owners and those who are not taking community safety seriously. My dad hunt put food on the table. My father-in-law grew up hunting in Eastern Oregon. This is not, this is about responsible gun ownership and those key steps, small additional steps we can take to help prevent, uh, pr protect our communities. My mom's a retired teacher. She faced the fear as a teacher going through all those drills, the same as our teachers and our kids are going through and the parents are so terrified of. So in short, yes, there are steps we can take. Uh, closing loopholes on checking for folks who wanna purchase guns if they have a violent history. Uh, making sure we have um, uh, things like um, banning ghost guns. Law enforcement is talking about needing some security on ghost guns. And then also uh, for weapons of war, essentially. The, there's a common discussion amongst responsible gun owners of even just raising the minimum age when you can purchase a, an assault rifle to, uh, to 21. I think those would be good steps moving forward. Uh, can you give us a couple of issues which you think you could realistically, in a congressional setting, work across the aisle, say with somebody like your opponent in this race? Sure. Well, I can't speak to my opponent in this case, but one of the things that is now getting bipartisan support and I would strongly work on is not enabling uh, members of Congress to trade stocks. You shouldn't, it's like in a sports analogy, you shouldn't be able to be the ref and be able to bet on a game and be able to take money from a team. That's where we're at right now because Congress also creates laws that regulates industry. So I strongly support and would be uh, immediately sign on to the ban on members of Congress being able to, to uh, trade in stocks. My, my opponent, I don't know where she stands on that issue. I've raised it foreign debates. She hasn't spoken to it. I know that as a, as a multimillionaire, she's very interested in some of the protections around the wealthy, but that's a common sense issue. Another common sense issue is lowering prescription drug prices. So uh, Congress took an important first step in the Inflation Reduction Act to look at just one in insulin uh, to lowering and the prescription drug prices by enabling Medicare to negotiate prescription drug prices. I think we should do that with all, price, uh, all prescription drugs. Look, I'm a small business owner. You can absolutely make a profit, you can cover costs, but you can't price gouge. And we're seeing that right now. A perfect example is the EpiPen. If you're allergic and need an EpiPen, those things cost five bucks to make. They cost about 600 bucks and you gotta replenish them every year and a half. I've spoken to too many parents whose kids need an EpiPen who just can't afford that. Uh, two interesting issues. Do you think you could, in both those cases, realistically work across the aisle with Republican uh, counterparts. Absolutely, because the vast amount, the vast majority of not just Oregonians but Americans want to see their prescription drug prices lowered. Look, I don't take corporate PAC money, and we have both Republicans and Democrats who've been in the pocket of Big Pharma on this. So this is an issue where the voters, if the voters' voice are heard, we will be, do, we would do that immediately. So it'll take some longer term work, but that is an area where voters really want to see it happen. And again, that's across the political divide. And so part of that job is to build the relationships, make the point, uh, get the, new, the word out to voters that that's an option, and build up that political pressure to help. As, as a central Oregonian, I work across the aisle all the time on drought and wildfire issues. So this is something I've experienced doing. Uh, should Congress work uh, at that level to remove marijuana from the Schedule I list of narcotics and uh, more broadly legalize marijuana, marijuana products at the federal level? I think so, because Oregonians have decided on this. We had this on the ballot here in Oregon. It's now part of our ag economy. And so in, in my view, and I've always said, I believe government knows, needs to know when to help out and when to get out of the way. This is an example where the federal government needs to get out of the way of Oregon, Oregonians, and decisions we made, and essentially what's now part of our ag economy. Should the uh, work of the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol continue after the end of this session? If it is not yet resolved, then it should, because protecting our democracy is job one. I give tremendous credit to Liz Cheney, who is helping to lead this effort to protect our democracy. I will disagree with her on policy issues, but when it comes to defending our democracy, we must stand together. It's critically important. I've been shocked that my opponent has made excuses for the January 6th insurrectionists. 
we have to be Americans first. This has to go beyond party affiliation. We have to protect our democracy, and then we get to argue about policy differences. Should um, access to family planning services, abortion services, be decided on the state level, or do we need some federal action and clarity at that level? I believe we need federal protections of abortion health care, uh, reproductive health care, and ultimately abortion services. Again, this is an area where government needs no one to help out and when to get out of the way. I fundamentally believe, and this is one of the biggest differences in my race, but I fundamentally believe it's up to a woman to decide what to do with her body. It is not the government's decision when to tell us when to start a family or what to do with our bodies. I feel very strongly about that. And I've spoken to plenty of folks across the political divide, even if they don't like abortion, that absolutely agree this is not the government's decision. We've seen a scaling back of the government protecting, the federal government protecting this right. Uh, my opponent has celebrated that stepping back. She has said, well, previously, that she would vote to ban abortion at six weeks before most women even know they're pregnant. I strongly disagree. She's now keeps changing her story on where she actually stands on that, but she was firmly on the record just a couple months ago as saying she would ban abortion at the federal level before a woman even knows she's pregnant at six weeks. Um, and actually other, other TV stations are calling her out at her flip-flopping and her being disingenuous and changing her story on that. I believe it, the government needs to protect the rights of people to make decisions about our own bodies. I will protect the right to abortion. My, my, uh, my opponent will take it away.